OMG. <laughs> now, I missed the millennial boat by uh, more years yeah. than I care to admit, but, but I think my understanding of it is a little bit different than what we're here to talk about today. But I'll leave that to the, to the panellists in a moment. First of all, I'd like to introduce for the discussion our, uh, our esteemed guests. Uh, first up, we have John Waba from um, Kite, who's a Senior Director and uh, Global Medical Education Lead. Uh, Lorna Ferguson from Amgen, Global Field Excellence Lead. And also Deepak Patil from uh, Actana, the very kindly sponsoring the drinks reception this evening. And uh, he's flown in from Alabama, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> great work there. Uh, so let's jump right into it. OMG, John, I understand this was your brainchild. Tell us a little bit about it and, and what set the call up. The yeah, so, so for me, when I've been looking at how far medical affairs have gone, have come over the past few years, especially when it comes to Omnichannel, uh, initially when I started having conversation with teams about omnichannel and medical, the initial reaction was, OMG, oh my God, where do we start? How do we do this? Are we becoming commercialized? Is this going to make us lose our sort of integrity, independence? But then I think a lot of work has happened over the past couple of years in terms of change management, in terms of mindset <coughs> evolution. Um, and I think it's now being seen as a way, it's not commercializing medical, but it's actually optimizing what we're trying to do, uh, optimizing how we are addressing our medical value proposition, what we're wanting to do in terms of you know, ultimately improving patient outcomes by in ensuring that our information is available to healthcare professionals in the right way, so it's always accessible. And actually looking at the evolution between you know, ad hoc, digital stuff to multi-channel, omni-channel, and eventually getting to the you know, always-on state where you can be accessible to your healthcare professional whenever they need you. Um, and yeah, looking at that, that, that evolution, so that sort of inspired me with the OMG. So I want to move from OMG, what are we going to do, mm -hmm. to look at what are the, our omni-channel medical goals, mm -hmm. and um, how can we actually start moving ahead with this. Uh, and hopefully the idea of the of this talk is to give people some tangible, actionable insights, advice that can help them on that journey if they're right at the beginning. And I think we also discussed the, uh, the overall, if you could choose one omnichannel medical goal, it would be based around the, um, the customer experience. Absolutely. So Ultimately, it's all about ensuring that there is good CX in what we do. If we invest in omnichannel without having good CX at the end of the day, if the healthcare professional or the stick stakeholder can't access that information, then there's no point in what we're doing. Indeed. Uh, Lorna, Omnichannel. I think it, uh, you can ask uh, 100 people and get 100 different answers sometimes, it seems, in this industry and these conferences, but be very interested to hear your perspective and, and what it means to you and, uh, and your work. Absolutely, and obviously this morning, Dario opened this morning and really, for me, hit the nail on the head of what, with what I want to say actually now about Omnichannel. It's all about the customer experience and really evolving that now in the omnichannel picture as we move forward in our industry. I think this is a really critical piece for us moving forward. Obviously, since omnichannel came into the picture, the customer has always, for me, been at the center of, of everything around omnichannel, but perhaps the customer experience hasn't so much been our focus. And I think this is really important for us moving forward in the industry. And obviously, in many sessions, Today, customer experience has come up as, as a critical mm. piece for us to really focus on moving forward. Yeah. And, and actually, very often, the assumption is when we talk about the customer, we're referring to the external customer, which is obviously the, the biggest priority. But actually, I want to also highlight that for me, especially in the, the past year, I really noticed that actually also the internal customer experience is also really critical because if the you know we're creating tools around omnichannel and and developing new things for our internal stakeholders to work with the experience for them also needs to be positive to have a knock-on effect of the the positive experience for our external customers too yeah indeed it's a good point certainly it's always seemed that looking back now multi-channel was more about us yeah. delivering the channels but omnichannel is about the customer um so Omnichannel, as we know, it evolved in the, in the, in the commercial space. Now medical affairs uh, have their own medical, have their own omnichannel leads as well. So um, Deepak, I'd like to invite you to talk about omnichannel in, in the medical affairs space. How does it, how does it play out? In, in yeah, your mind? I mean, for medical affairs, it's, it's really early days when it comes to uh, omnichannel, like you said. Um, we have been engaging with physicians in more channels than we have in the past. Um, 
in not a very intentional manner. So it's more of a multi-channel versus an omni-channel approach so far. Um, and we're starting to acknowledge the risk of alert fatigue and the risk of redundancy in knowledge sharing, which really can impact the relationship that we, we have as a trusted advisor to, um, to a physician. Uh, so, so three key, key components when you start thinking about an omnichannel experience from a medical, designing an omnichannel experience from a medical affairs team perspective. I, I think um, traditionally our touch points or our contacts with physicians have been less frequent than on the commercial side. So um, it's, it's, uh, it, you have to account, take that into account. Um, the, the nature of those conversations, they're seated in deeper scientific exchange and they're also more bi-directional in nature. As important it is to get a message out, it's equally important to collect those insights and inform uh, internal initiatives. So having these three components in place as you define an omni channel approach, I think is critical to how we, how we create it in the metaphor space. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a certainly a good point, one that resonates across different organisations, I believe. The amount of face time that the, uh, the medical affairs teams are getting can drive insights that can inform other things. So, John, would you like to speak to how, how those insights can be used to inform the, the CX? Yeah, absolutely. I think, so when it comes to insights, we, we are guardians of a lot of insights that come into, into the company, into the enterprise mainly from MSLs, but also that's one piece of the puzzle. We've got advisory boards, we've got patient engagement activities, which are really, really important to get yeah. those useful data points and also insights from patient organizations and users of, of, your, of your medications. We've got social, social listening, we've got you know, insights coming from uh, you know, ISR submissions, research submission, grant submissions, all of these can actually help us understand what the bigger picture is. And the idea is to instill those, analyze them, and using those to inform us how do we shape that customer journey. Yep. Uh, because we will know that th this information will tell us what is the best, what is the me medical and met need for that specific HCP or specific group of HCPs. Uh, how is how are we best to engage with them? Uh, when is the best touch point? Is it you know? around Congress, for example, when there's lots of new data being coming out. Is it afterwards? Is it before? Maybe throughout. Um, but also in, in, important to just use this, not in silo, but to bring this into shaping the CX journey, the customer journey from beginning to end. And this is why medical needs to be sitting at the table right from the beginning mm. and not being just consulted at the end. Yeah, no, it relates to the earlier discussion I Absolutely. think about involving medical affairs. And uh, Lorna, I remember you were speaking about uh, at Amgen the creation of dashboards to mm -hmm. capture the data points that, data points that um, John's just mentioned there. Can you speak to that for a moment? Absolutely. So within the last year I've experienced for the first time, obviously we have many dashboards within, within the company, but I've seen the first experience of us bringing in data from both the commercial and the medical teams into one dashboard for the purpose of the teams in the field being able to look at that information and be able to use that to help plan their future engagements, plan next best actions, you know, associated with the omnichannel piece. But for me, there's some great things and some not so great things about how we're using that now. And the dashboard is a great source of information for the teams internally to use. But I think for the future, we need to see how the dashboard can be used in terms of connecting it with the campaigns that we're doing across the medical team and the commercial team and how it all fits together. Mm. Um, and also, very interestingly, in the past few months, you know, the practicality of the dashboard, we've created this nice piece for the teams to use. But I'm seeing some realities of how it's actually being used and some feedback coming from them. Um, for example, in the smaller countries, they're kind of feeding back that it's great that you've provided this dashboard to us, but actually we already know our commercial counterparts so yeah. well that we don't need to look at a dashboard to find that out. We know we can look at that, you know, talk to our commercial colleagues and we know how we engage with a particular HCP individually, so we don't need to use a dashboard to look at that individual profile of, of how we're engaging across the organisation. And I think that's something that we need to work on when we're creating a tool, you know, to see how it fits with the team for the internal customer experience. Is it working well? Are there things, gaps that we need to address to improve, 
you know, what we're developing to, to ensure we have the best yeah. I noticed we're reflecting place. already on aligning with commercial teams and across the department. Yeah. It seems to be a theme throughout the day and uh, it's well recognised that um, sometimes the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing mm -hmm. in an organisation. Some organisations aren't involving the other in, in decisions. I wonder what can we do about alignment? Um, John, do you have any, uh, any insights you'd like to share with the team about how we can improve the... Um, the uh, the melding of the of the organisation of the departments. yeah I think you know it goes back to what, what I said already which is medical and medical needs to be sitting at the table right at the beginning when we are thinking about what does that customer journey look like what is the CX strategy the CX strategy shouldn't be set by commercial or medical you shouldn't have two CX strategies it's one CX strategy one plan but it's it's got different the, the different ownership of medical and commercial depending on you know what's what's needed. Um, but there's also an educational piece required within medical as well to accept that omnichannel is the way we need to go in order to optimize what we do. Um, I remember speaking to someone about potentially using NPS, and I know this was controversial, but NPS, Next Net Promoter Score, uh, mm. and there was pushback because it says the word promotion, promoter in there, and they were like, medical can't promote. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's also about, you know, educating about the value of certain things and why we're doing certain things. Um, you know, accompanied by that, you know, that change management, the mindset change, uh, but also the what's in it for me. You know, why, why would an MSL be investing in doing omnichannel when they already know the HCP? So it's about also thinking outside the box and looking at how this can actually optimize their work and make it life easier for them, but also address the HCP's needs and expectations. Uh, and I think if you, if, you, if you can get these things right, that helps alignment with the rest of the organisation, but also within the medical team. You mentioned something else that I really found interesting and very practical as well. In the, don't try to do it all at once. Mm -hmm. Try and, um, when, when you're leading an initiative, and if you Absolutely. want buy-in from your commercial team or the, or the other departments, bite off something small. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, You have to, right? Because you, you, can't, you can't solve everything all at once. So start small. And that was actually, you know, uh, you know, happy to share an example later, which is about being very focused, understanding what is the issue that you're trying to solve, looking at what, is the med what are the medical objectives that you're trying to solve and how can Omnichannel help you do that rather than, you know, create a new problem or a new issue, mm. but actually look at how can this solve what you're trying to do, the what's in it for me piece. And yeah, start small, couple of channels, one couple of user journeys, get some quick wins and then you can expand on that. Yeah. Deepak, yeah. would you um, care to t touch on how to, how to leverage the, the small wins and, um, and to roll out across the, the organisation or get collective buy-in for a better alignment? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, you know, a couple of things you said about having alignment at a higher level across medical and commercial and R&D on what's the, the, the customer experience you want to have, identifying those nodes and defining some metrics that would allow you to track how a physician or a set of physicians are progressing along that journey. And that could be an adoption ladder, could be something that's less commercial, less scientifically uh, sort of engaged, but it could be something that just lets you visualize and quantify how far you're moving your customers along the journey. But then also, in terms of creating those, uh, you know, building a journey together, it's okay to do some things in silos and in smaller teams, yeah. right? I mean, um, if you are trying to recruit or, or if you're trying to interact with newer emerging key, key opinion leaders and trying to get them to participate in a disease state education program, for example, it's okay for MedAffairs to sort of try and own that piece as long as you're being very intentional in what's the outcome of each of those micro journeys and making sure that they're, they're all mapping up towards the one uniform customer experience you're looking to achieve. Yeah. And you, you have the numbers tell you how many physicians are moving along your adoption ladder, how many physicians are so stuck in a certain place. So you get that feedback to know which strategy is not working and where you need to iterate. So you know, having a sort of steering committee, which is cross-functional, could be your TA leadership and brand leadership trying to work together in setting the stage and then letting your, each team build its own journeys is, 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 is the way to go, I think. Yeah, I, I appreciate the practicalities that you've both just suggested. Um, start small, have a few wins, build on that success, demonstrate how it benefits and then go to the next level. And yeah, I mean, 
It's easy to say, yeah, let's tear down the silos, but let's not be in a hurry. There are some that rightly should be there and that, that will impede others. So it's a, it's a good insight. The, um, right, and from those that were here for my last discussion, you know that I'm all about actual examples. Let's, it's, it's great to talk about the theory, but what's something that the audience can take away and, and learn and maybe replicate or, uh, or benefit from when they, uh, when they go home? So, John, you touched that you may have had an example to share, re leveraging that small sort of win yeah. uh, approach earlier. Yeah, so um, I remember when we started, when we embarked on the journey with Omnichannel, one of the things that was a sort of a sticking point was there was a customer journey already, a commercial customer journey, which medical have contributed to, but again, the mindset was, they looked at it, yes, it made sense, but the mindset was, we weren't, you know, they weren't going to be using that, so they didn't really mm. pay much attention to it. So initially it was, well, we can't use this because it's all about prescribing, it's all about moving, you know, increasing advocacy, and that's not what medical does. That's a different discussion. But the way we looked at it was, okay, well, how can we look at it through a medical lens? And what we did was we looked at it through data and HCP knowledge, increasing confidence at each of those stages. What are the medical goals to support the HCP mindset and barriers at each of those stages of the customer journey? Um, we involved medics from different, and MSL specifically, i.e. people who are customer facing, uh, from different regions to get their input to make sure that this resonated with them so it doesn't look like this is something that global is just saying, go ahead and do it, mm. but getting that feedback. Um, and then once we had some sort of alignment on what the common denominators are or what could potentially work as a skeleton that could be built on later, we looked at personas, and again, we had personas that medical had contributed to, but because they weren't using them, they didn't really think, does that resonate with my customers? Yeah. Um, and it was mm. felt that, you know, one, our H, the HCPs that medical worked with don't fit into one specific persona. They sort of, there's usually a mixture of two or three. So we said, okay, well, that's not uh, something we need to address right now. Let's be agile, let's just keep moving. That's something that we can address later. So we parked the persona piece, and then we looked at what other channels that are available. We chose two channels, we chose two simple user journeys. We involved commercial at, in this part of the work, uh, as well as IT, tech, data privacy, legal, etc. And the idea was, can we start integrating a digital medical user journey with a commercial digital user journey? Separation where needed, but actually from a customer experience perspective, it's one one overall mm. sort of user journey. Um, and we chose one brand, one country, went there, piloted, I'm not gonna use pilot, but did an MVP uh, or a small experiment to uh, show how this could work, what are the quick learns that we can get, yep. that we can then go back to the medical leadership team and say, as a result of this, this is what happened to the engagement with our customers and it was great yeah. compared to before. Uh, and this is why we need additional investment to do this, because one of the big things we find in medical is there is no resource that is currently dedicated, or not in many companies, that's currently dedicated to CX or Omnichannel. And before leadership can put their sort of money into these things, they want to see, well, can this work? And so yeah. this was our way of doing something sort of quick and dirty, show that this works, um, and go back with some good learnings. I really like the agile thinking, like a lot of <coughs> big organisations that slow moving gears to, to get things through. But in that example you said you uh, started off small but then pivoted away without calling it a failure and writing it off, which was to happen. And I, I'm all for the, whoever brought it up earlier, having a conference where you talk about failures. And I think Paul was running a, um, something on uh, some platform about pharma F-ups or something at one point, which I thought was a tremendous idea because you can't move forward till you learn the mistakes and, and capitalise. But as, uh, as always, I like to save the best for last. <laughs> and Lorna, I'd like to ask you for any sort of world, any sort of example to um, to finish up the, the session for us. So, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> no offence. Um, <laughs> I'd like to share with you all a very specific example in the the entire omnichannel space that we've been going through um, in our Latin America team in uh, Amgen in the past year, and it's and it's basically all around messaging, mobile messaging with our customers. So the commercial team rolled out the capability for basically the, the commercial colleagues to be able to communicate with their HCPs through WhatsApp. Sounds very simple. Obviously, as you can imagine, there were a few hurdles in terms of compliance in making that happen, but it was successfully rolled out to the team. 
And of course, in the natural like pattern of things, the medical team in Latin America then jumped on this and really wanted to have this for the medical team as well. So we started to look into piloting this for the Latin America team as well. And we have successfully rolled this out. So we're really happy that they now have this approach and so that particularly the HGP can have the same interaction with our colleagues in Latin America through WhatsApp. But as with many things that we try to do in medical, we did face a few technical hurdles and, and actually we're still working on that in this particular example to try and improve what we can do for the medical team and you know, to allow them to be able to share content through the mobile messaging piece. And you know, this has just been a fascinating, very specific project that we've been, we've been working on. There's growing interest across the organization to have this in other countries, but I think we need to really refine the experience for both the internal and external customers around this whole topic to, you know, to really improve on that. And um, so, you know, it's just a very specific piece, but, you know, just mm. another example that fits into the omnichannel channel picture as such. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just to round off all of the things that we're, we've been talking about in terms of omnichannel as a whole, I think as an industry, you know, it's really come a long way since we first started talking about Om Omnichannel and we need to congratulate ourselves in the industry about making some great progress, even though we recognise that we obviously have many things to work on and it's going to be continuously evolving. But I think, you know, just to round off some of the things we've been discussing in this session and, and other sessions as well, like we are re really making some good progress. Um, in this space, yeah, yeah, for the customer. Wonderful. Uh, we are running behind. I, uh, I've been told no, no, no Q and A. So if you do have any discussion, please, or any questions, please look up the guys on on LinkedIn. Connect with them, and uh, I'll be happy to share their experience and insights. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please thank me. Please join me in thanking <laughs> the uh, the fellow panelists. <laughs>